we're on. Hi everyone. Hey guys, I'm just saying to Lisa, like, where do we look? Well, we look at the screen there when we're talking to people. We look at each other. Yep. And it's just about being comfortable. And um, everyone, you would have read what I've written in relation to Lisa tonight. Meet Lisa Haynes. Hi. A little miracle that she is. So we're talking about um, your life, Lisa, and you know things that had happened like right back when, before you were born even. So you suffered a stroke. Um, I was born and I had a lot of problems uh, when when I was born, and it wasn't. They thought I had like there was a, a multiple of um, things, and they weren't real sure. And um, yeah, it ended up that I had a stroke when I was born. Um, they found out when I was about two or three. Um, but in that time beforehand, I spent a lot of time at um, at um, like the Sydney Camperdown. Spent in in and out of there um, with lots of medical things that sick bubs do, and I was one of them sick bubs. Um, they didn't know if I was going to survive or not, and 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 I did um, lots of times. I um, passed away a couple of times. They said, but then I. Around and you were meant to survive, be here. Meant to be here. And you were like, this is the thing that I find so fascinating is that you were one of twins. Yeah. yeah. So your mum didn't know she was having twins. No, she didn't, and she had a miscarriage. Um, and then and then I came along. So um, did she know she was still pregnant? She found out at the end. Actually, I spoke to her a couple of days ago about it just to make sure that it was okay because I, you know, it's been years since mum and I had spoken about it. But yeah, mum had, um, had, had like a miscarriage and, um, and didn't realise I was still pregnant until she realised that I was that, that I was still there. And um, yeah, so when I was born I was um, sick. That's and, so crazy though. Yeah. I can't even imagine what that must be like because, I mean, an absolute blessing to your mum because she'd lost a baby. So thinking that she wouldn't have a baby. You know, and then suddenly she's still pregnant, and yeah. it's, and then along you come. Yeah. And I mean, wow! And you certainly, you certainly lived through a lot as a, a as a newborn. Yeah, I did. I um, and I, I don't remember it like much as just what mum and dad have, have told me. I was really blessed to have you know that supportive family. My mother was just like she was. Is mum's my um hero. Uh, because without mum, I, I, I don't think that I would be here. Um, yeah, I was just crook and I couldn't talk. Um, I, and I didn't start talking until I was about 10. Um, and in that time when I was in kinder, I was kicked out of the state school. Um, they, they, I was let's go, let's kinder. rewind. Yep. Because that is, like that's just insane. What you just said there, and I'm just sitting here, I'm going now, I know that I've spoken to you about your life, but for my listeners out there, I just want to say that again. Now, Lisa didn't talk till she was about 10. I stuttered. Stuttered? And now, I mean, tonight we're saying too, because if um, Lisa does stutter, that she's going to go into what she what's known as prolonged speech. So you'll notice a difference like with a tone that kind of like drops but and a lot slower speech because that's Lisa's way of stopping her stuttering and it works for her. Yep. She's had lots of speech pathology. So we've talked about that. So, um, you know, if you do detect that, that's why. So you had you were born with cerebral palsy as well? Well, um, they thought I was born with cerebral palsy. Up until they found out that it was a stroke. Oh, okay, That's right. I mean, yeah. Yeah, because I, you know my face was stripped and and I low muscle tone. I had none, and I, I like I couldn't walk for. A, I was I never met the milestones of a normal baby. Um, like I couldn't sit up until I was about two or something. I just was floppy, and then they realised because this is like fifty years ago. Mm. Um, they realised that oh she had a stroke. And it's not like today I went to, you know, 10 different doctors and every doctor had its own file. So it wasn't a computer system that, you know, a doctor in Newcastle could see what doctors at Camperdown were saying about mm. me. Like it was just, it wasn't as technical. 
And it would have been a lot of down. a lot of like travelling and all that for your parents as well. Oh, yeah. Like backwards and forwards, yeah. hospitals, doctors. And we just touched on like we'll talk about kindergarten in a minute, but we touched on and I think it needs more of this, but we we're talking about your parents and what yeah. a beautiful, beautiful, loving environment that was for Absolutely. you as a family. Like fishing was your big yeah. thing with your dad. Yeah, yeah. mum and dad. We I had a, I've got a brother and sister. Um, we, we not that we weren't allowed to play weekend sport, but um, we our weekend sport was fishing, um, and we went fishing. Went on Friday. Mum and Dad used to pick us up from school, my sister and my brother, and um, in our school clothes, and we went across and camped on um, Hawksness and Stockton Beach, and. Um, you know, sometimes we just dug a hole in the sand and if it was going to rain, Dad put a four-wheel drive on top of us. I love that so bit. get wet. That was um, a bit I was going to say. Yeah. Like, if you hadn't have said that, oh. I was going to say, tell us about what your dad did oh, if it started lovely. to rain. Yeah. You dig a hole. We had to, we You all get in the hole. I found it really quite cruel what happened to you oh, at school. Absolutely. Like that, um, so you tell the story. Okay, um, and, and it would never be allowed now in the state system. Mm. Um, when I was in kinder, we went to a little state um, school, my sister and I. Um, Greg's, my brother's younger than me. Um, and and I was in kindergarten and, and I couldn't talk, I used to jubble, jubble. Um, and I, what kids have now, they've got, um, um, when they're, uh, sensory issues, and I think there wasn't a name for sensory issues 50 years ago or mm, 45 years mm. ago, and it was sensory, I like, I couldn't go to birthday parties, I couldn't go, scared of balloons, still scared of balloons. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah that's right, sensory, yeah. Um, I didn't like noise, didn't like crowds. Uh, and and I couldn't talk and started off at kindergarten and um, the and I was one of these kids that didn't mix um, I never mixed with the kids didn't I just found it awkward to be there and I used to run home every day I used to run home and the the kindergarten teacher or the teacher of the school she was a cranky cranky as a as a five-year-old you remember her as a cranky she wasn't a, like a loving kindergarten mm. teacher and she used to come in and, and 
losing Nana and I just couldn't cope with the situation. At you, lose it with you. Yeah, I just, just with, it didn't have to lose it with me, but just lose it with the class or another child and I just out the door and home because we lived about half a K, I think, from home. I used to run home. And then, um, and then the school um, said I was retarded, which I hate that word. I hate that word. No, yeah, well, it's they not. said I was a. Um, it's not used today anyway, is it? Yeah, no. No. So they kicked me out of the public system, and I had two. Because options. of that. Because of that. No, so. and, and, like yeah, um, yeah, um, mm. and they gave me an option for mum and dad. I, they gave my parents an option. One was to go to the back then there was like a Stockton home, um, and the home at Morrisset for special needs people as well. Um, so that's where they wanted you to that's go. That's my options that I had to go to school, um, or to be like to be to go there to live for mum and dad. But no, there's there's something in that wild child, that wild animal that we've got at home. Um, and uh, they were f so I was expelled from school. And um, is that kindergarten? That was kinder. <laughs> kinder, yeah, expelled from school, kindergarten. Yeah. And uh, and the options looked grim. And um, mum and I was still going to um, camper down, you know, trying to sort out what's wrong with my beautiful daughter. Mum kept on saying. And, um, so it's constantly going back to the hospital back, and saying yeah. what I'm, is wrong. I was also, also having um, grand mal, if, if, um, epilepsy, grand yeah. epilepsy as well. Um, so I was, I was doing that and mum and dad were just trying to get answers, um, as all parents should. Um, and I came across a professor down at, I think, Camperdown Hospital. And the professor said, um, you know... The pathway to the brain, because I had the stroke at birth, half of my brain has gone. So half of my brain is dead. And so so every time, so when I had to learn to talk, it was like a stroke, stroke victim, had to learn to talk, and I had to do everything again, but, but learning as a child to do it as well. Mm. So that was great. Uh, but this beautiful old um, professor, Mum, always refers to him, is... Um, told mum 20, uh, 45 years ago that the brain has got pathways that can be re, re charged or recharged. something yeah. and, and at the time mum was saying this thing to other doctors and specialists and they were going no that's, the brain doesn't do that and she listened to this guy and this professor and um, after that I can remember doing crazy stuff like crawling backwards, crawling sideways, rolling over, rolling back, you know. How old were you then? Five, four, five, you know. Three, I don't, yeah. So that experience like was all new to you? Yeah, then. yeah, just, wow. just doing exercise and, and, and to build my muscle tone because I had none, um, getting massages like mum and dad and just doing catching balls, dancing around the kitchen until it's time for bed just to build the core up. Um, so, you know, that, it, yeah, it was, it was a crazy, beautiful childhood that, um, and in that time as well, um, mum wouldn't take no for an answer and um, every day after I was expelled from school, after she got sort of a pattern of, doing home stuff, home exercise in home gym, home uh, rehabilitation to get my growth motor skills and which were very lacking up. Um, walked me down to the Catholic school for 12 months, knocked on the front door and said my daughter needs a school and I wasn't Catholic and they went I'm sorry but there's no room and about a year into knocking they opened the door and said I'll come in. So, I'm going to repeat that. So, your mother, for 12 months, went and knocked on the door at the Catholic school and said, my daughter needs an education. Like, she just didn't give up on you, did she? And then finally, after 12 months, like, are you hearing this? Mm -hmm. Like, 12 months. 
That is just the most beautiful thing a mother could do, isn't it? Absolutely. And I mean, that is what you do. I'm a mum. Yeah, absolutely. And I know what you do for your children. Yeah. And your grandchildren. Like, you've just got this built-in thing. But that is incredible absolutely. that your mum yeah. did not give up. No, not at all. No. And then after 12 months, they said, like, come, come on. Come in, yeah. And that would have been... That would have been yeah. your whole life changing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So how old were you then? Oh, I think it was, I think I got in, you know, first first form, uh, sorry, first year, year one. Yeah. Year one. Uh, it might have been late, late, late kindergarten, but I, I got the year one, um, the year, the, the, the first year um, school photos. So uh, from from that year year one, yeah. So it would have been you know six, turning seven, five. Yeah, about six. Yeah. That's just beautiful, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So, what were your memories after that, as far as going to school and mixing with other kids and? I had um the nuns introduce me to a really nice group of friends, and then still still. My, my friends. Oh yeah, wow, that's still, beautiful. Still my friends. I still couldn't talk. Every time um, it was show and tell, I can remember I got up there and I sung to them because I still couldn't talk without stuttering. And I just got into um, to singing. They said music was the key, so I had I learned how to play the violin. The nuns, the nurses. Oh. Oh. I was never good. Like, I played for years and was never good. Um, loved it, but and it was just the music and it was the um, like the left and right brain happening and it was the best thing to get it all happening. Um, and th there was a couple of kids that used to, you know, torment because I couldn't speak. And I, I still remember that 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 those situations and then days, but with all the horrible kids that did that, there was a you know ninety five percent kids that were just so much more giving and loving and accepting and and then I um, in nineteen eighty six I did year twelve so wow awesome. yeah that's incredible yeah so it wasn't so once i got on on the roll i was full of fine for my education to do all that that um yeah i couldn't do it at, at a state system at a, through the state system i had to go to the catholic system and I just imagine if well i mean it's really horrible to even think that way but considering uh, the fact that they wouldn't have you in the state school system I mean, that is really incredibly sad. But if you were just left way back, then oh, you would not have developed as no, you have. No, Like, thank you to your beautiful mum. Yeah. Like, thank yeah. you. Um, so then you eventually met your husband. Yeah, I met my husband. And um, we got married and um, had three very beautiful kids, girls. And, um, and when I had... Had the girls um, because when you stutter, if you're tired, if, if I'm if I'm tired, if I'm emotional, if I'm anxious or stressed or upset, uh, or any situations I don't feel like that I'm going to like to be in, I I will start stuttering. And after each birth, um, I had to go back. Um, my stutter got worse, and I had. I, I knew how to pull myself back into line, and that was okay. But when my third one was born, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't just pull myself back into line. It just wasn't working. Um, so I, you know, went and learned prolonged speech as well, which has just been a godsend. When I like to use it, but I don't like to use it. Yeah, yeah, but it, it gets you it out, gets of that out of that rut, doesn't it? I need to. And I mean, it'd be yeah. nothing worse because I know that just people that I've spoken to that once you get in that stuttering, yeah. it builds up and it builds up, yeah. Yeah. you know, to where it becomes a very anxious situation. Yeah. And even now, if you have a conversation with a person, you can see um, <laughs> the person doesn't know. Some people would mock you or, or laugh. And I think in my head, if you only knew, like if you mm. only knew, you, and it's 
amazing how many people still like do that and it's it, you know I'm over any think now with it but I think oh, if, if you only knew you yeah, know what you've been through like yeah. everything that you've been through yeah and, and people get a shock when they know that I started you know I had speech therapy for 19 years 19 years 19 years, years yeah so you know like if you're having a situation because we're talking about this too if you're having a situation yourself and you've developed a stutter and you haven't heard about this prolonged speech like you know talk to someone about it because Absolutely. it certainly worked for you yeah. and speech therapy like Lisa's had 19 years of speech therapy so she could sit here and talk as she does today and she's a pretty good talker let me tell you mm -hmm. um, you know so it does work but you, you've just got to keep it up yeah not give up yeah that's it keep yeah. it up so then um, being a mum of three girls yep. and then that just wasn't enough for you, was it? So you wanted to do something where... I, yeah, I, I <laughs> wanted to... I, I, became a swim, I became a swim instructor and um, by default actually because I was having um, time away at, at Coffs Harbour and there was this little girl who was about four or five and she was really, really scared and our girls were swimming around and they were jumping in they were two and three two and three, I think I was pregnant with my third one and um, and this little girl was so scared and the girls were all swimming because um, growing up at like a, at, 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 the, at the beach we always just swam and always loved the water and my mum always said to me when I was a child to calm me down it was the bath yeah, and I just, water. I was always in water as a baby and as a sick baby because I screamed and Water was the thing that just was my world, and I just put me in water. Um, so I was, I'm always comfortable, always have been comfortable around water. Loved water, loved swimming as a kid, and um, then when it found me when I was an adult, um, we were swimming with the girls, and uh, this lady said, "Oh, how how do you get your kids to swim?" And I went, "You just, I don't know, but it just probably would do it." She said, I can't get my daughter in. And I said, um, would she like to play with the girls? And so she said, yes. So, so in that week, this kid that was scared was jumping in and going back by the end of the week. She said, you should become a swim instructor. I went, yeah, I should be. So um, so I did. It took me about a year. And um, so I've been teaching swimming for about 19 years now. And um, the last 14, 14 years, going under 15, I've been teaching set up a com complex at my house and um, it's in my backyard and I teach all year round, hot and cold, outside, it doesn't matter if it's oh, sorry, winter or summer, pool's always 34 degrees and it's, it just works for lots of different children. I teach over 200 kids but a week and I'm in the pool for about a week. A week? A week? Two hundred children a week. Yeah, wow. Um, I I'm in the pool for about forty three hours a week, and and that's in the water. I don't teach from the outside. I drop them out. I teach from the inside, and I've got so many little kids that I just um, need in a little bit of special care with their swimming for whatever reasons. There's a um, a few with special needs. There's a, f a few more with undiagnosed spe special needs, um, sen sensory issues, and low tone, low tone issues, um, which over the last ten years it's sort of increasing, probably double than what it was ten years ago. So it's always a challenge. It's always coming up like this is my last week now, and then I've got the, the school break off. Um, but not so much because it's winter but in summer there's always someone who comes back and says a little Johnny fell into the pool he got back to the side and yep you, you know, oh wow done, that's what you want to hear yeah, isn't it it's, it's, it's usually about three or four kids after the Christmas break that they get a text or a phone call from a parent or them going oh my goodness Lisa or something like that but it's just it just is my world it's just so beautiful 
was just so beautiful and um, and I just know that I, it's, it's a nice job because you don't have to deal with the big people, the, the, the big like adults, you, you deal with little little from, people, from babies to, yeah. to um, seven year olds and it's innocent and they respect you because you respect them. You don't get any kids that talk back to you because you don't accept that in in like the school. You just say, I'm sorry, but you don't talk to Lisa like that. And they go, oh, okay. Like it in, you set the, the boundaries there. Mm. They're made. So I've just got the most beautiful families, amazing families. Um, and I form friendships with the mums of these beautiful kids. It just, it's just a beautiful job. Oh, yeah. isn't that lovely it to is. hear that? It's lovely. And I mean, like... I was saying to you, this is like some weeks ago when we were talking, and we are talking about that, and I'd said to you, you know, like, you had no complaints, you loved being in the water, like, that amount of time, because I said, how do you, like, your deer shrivel up or whatever, like, mm -hmm. after being in the water, no. Um, do you have any complaints or anything like that? And you said, no, it's a beautiful job, and I absolutely love doing it. But when we got into the nitty-gritty, because I was saying about today um, how we are as parents and grandparents and we'll yeah. go and watch our kids at sport and yeah. and after we had this conversation I went to watch a little kids soccer match I could not believe how many parents were on mobile phones yeah. it's um, it breaks my heart I, I I've, it breaks my heart it really does as a mum watching my kids go to swimming lessons and um, you know back then you didn't have a phone you know you didn't have phones until 15 years ago and um, you used to watch them they used to come up and you used to sit there and talk to someone and then you know nice job and everything was a good job and my children can still remember me going and watching and and being part of swimming lessons or being part of watching them play netball or being part mm. of just them at the park watching them play um, and as an older mum I, I feel sad, I feel sad for the parents, the younger parents that, that they're going to miss, they're going to miss that opportunity because now you know my youngest they're all in, in their 20s it's only now that you reflect and go, you've only got them for this little mm. blink of an eye. And if you don't miss it, because you're, if you miss it because you're on your phone, then you don't see it. And parents are just, they're just missing out on so much when they go to netball or when they go to soccer or when they're at swimming lessons. If they don't, and you know, there are a lot of parents out there that still look at their kids, but there's a lot of parents out there that that are on their phones and some are on for work but there's some on just because they've got their phone there. Well how about we set out a challenge this week and I'd say the next time that you're going to your children's soccer game, next time you're going to their basketball game, cricket, whatever they're playing, I don't know what the season is, I'm not into sport, but whatever they're playing, wherever they're going, their dance group, whatever, no phone. And when they make that little thing that just that little bit of achievement there, you know, how about yes. clapping your hands yes. and letting them know how special Absolutely. they are and how awesome they are because that encouragement makes them strive, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, yeah. there'd be nothing worse than you're swimming, on it. you're swimming away and you're swimming away and you finally reach your, the goal of, and you look around and mum's playing Candy Crush. Yeah. Like, hey, forget the Candy Crush. Forget the text messages, forget the work stuff. And I know, you know, it is like, it, I'm, I'm one of these people that have always got my phones attached to me. But, you know, like when there comes a situation like that, put the phone away. Just put the phone away and give that child your undivided attention. And just watch the difference. It's like, you know, turning up and, and doing tuck shop, isn't it, at the school? Yeah. Your kids are that excited and that proud that your mum's in the tuck shop. You know, it's the same kind of feeling that they get. Absolutely. You know, let them yep. strive and, and, and be appreciated for, for what they've done and, and um, 
how they've done well in whatever sport or whatever it is that they've done. You know, let them know that. Yeah. Let them yeah. know that you're there and you're actually watching. Yeah. And Absolutely. just watch the difference. You know, they're still going to ask you for money at the end of the show to go to the canteen or whatever, but still, you know. But, you know, it is going to make a difference. So um, that's the challenge. That's my challenge for you guys this week is, you know, everyone take it up and just see what a difference it's going to make for that little person's life. So, Lisa, like, thank you so much for coming on. And I know that you have done so well. You didn't even have to go into that prolonged speech. No. Like, that's just so awesome. Like, I'm loving that. Um, so I want to say thank you for telling us your beautiful story because it did have an amazing ending and the love that your mother has for you and your father. But the never giving up from your mum, and that's another thing. You know, don't give up on your kids. And you know that in your heart, like... You know that you can do better or you know that you can take them there or you go and get that second, third, fourth, fifth, sixteenth opinion. Go and do it. If you know in your heart that you feel that there's something that can be done, do it. Because this is the difference. Lisa is living proof that that's the difference between not giving up. So, you know, take the challenge and don't give up. So each and every week I ask my guests, to just give a little message of hope to someone that's out there and maybe watching the show tonight. Now, whether it's happened to them or whether they've got maybe a grandchild now that's the same thing or a similar situation is happening to their grandchild, you know, that, I don't know, like a similar situation, or their neighbour or their, their son or daughter or the neighbour's kids or their niece or nephew, what would be a message of hope that you would give someone out there? So you just have to look over there to the camera and just uh, leave a little message of hope to someone. I, I would um, I would just, as, as a mum, and if, if you're a nan, an auntie or something, and you just feel that something isn't quite right with that child or, or you've been told something and you believe in your heart that it's not what you believe, Go and get another opinion. You know, there's so many different avenues now. This, you know, and I don't mean go and be like a Dr. Google. Cause that's not what I'm saying. But just don't, don't give up hope. Fight for your child. Fight for your grandchild. Fight for your niece. Fight for your nephew. Because you are that child's voice. There's, there's no other one. The child hasn't got a voice. You are the child's voice. And you will make a big difference to that child. That's it, yeah. That's it, that's yeah. fantastic. Just, yeah, just beautiful. Voice. So, yeah, we are the child's voice, yeah. you know, because sometimes we are their only voice. Absolutely. And yeah. I know even like mums that have gone through a similar situation, that they can get to the stage where they're not giving up. What they're doing is they're listening to what they've been told and they believe that there is no other choices. But, you know... Oh, just keep going. Keep knocking on doors. Unlike your mum, yeah. for yeah. one year, knocked on the door of knocked the school. On, knocked on the school. That's, oh, it. that's just unbelievable. Just beautiful story. So thank you, everyone, for um, listening tonight. And just share the heck out of these stories, will you? Because this is how it's all getting around. And we're really growing, thankfully, and going really well. So thank you, Trish Griffiths. Ian Edwards, thank you. Tony Summer, Deb Allen, Buster Groove, thank you, Louise Melrose, Janet Ryan, Annette Ray, thank you, Annette, Sharon Sharp, thank you, Colleen Dandelion, thank you so much, and Natalie Hewitt. Natalie was on last year, last year, last week, and her son's on next week, so that's a great story too. Karen Wood, uh, Doreen Barrett, Melinda Coleman, and upside down, Miss Jane, and <laughs> Mel Kate, Deb Connor. Clinton Graham, Patra, Trisha Hobbits. Trisha, you're in Vienna and you're watching my show. Thank you so much. And Lisa's parents. Oh, that's lovely. They're so beautiful. Like, what's your mum's name? Diane. Diane, I have got to say to you, you are the most beautiful, wonderful, loving mummy. And thank you from my heart for doing what you did for Lisa because look at this beautiful woman here now sitting next to me. 
And that's because you know what? You never gave up. So thank you from me and all my viewers. Thank you from everyone. Thank you, Diane. Like, blessings to you, darling. So it's good night from us. It's good night. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. And know that no matter what in life, don't give up. And if you need help or something's going on, ring Lifeline. Tell a friend. Get someone to help you. There's always someone out there. So no matter what in life, thumbs up. We've got thumbs, thumbs up, up, Lisa. Thumbs up. Don't give up. Know you're going to be okay. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye.